Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you an interesting game played by Soviet chess grandmaster Viktor Korshnoi. Korshnoi is on the black side and his opponent is Swiss chess player Werner Hook. The game was played in 1978 in Switzerland. By the way, for those who do not know, from 1994 Korshnoi also started to represent Switzerland. Now, without further ado, let's get started with this fascinating game and see what happened on the board. Werner Hook opened up with knight f3 and Korshnoi responded with e6. g3, d5, bishop g2, c5, white castles, kingside, knight c6, c4. In his book, My Best Games, Korshnoi writes, I hesitated over what to call this opening, but this move is typical of the Reti. After d4 on move 5, a setup typical of the Catalan opening would have arisen. By the way, I have to tell you that this position can also arise after English opening when white opens up with c4. Here we have d takes c4 and queen a4. At the time of this game, this was a novelty. White queen is coming after the pawn on c4, but before this, usually white was playing knight a3. This is a stronger continuation, of course, but in our game we have queen a4, and the problem with this move is that as white is bringing into the game the queen too early, later in some cases, black can develop his pieces by attacking white queen, thus gaining important tempos. Here we have bishop d7, queen takes c4, and rook c8. Here is another reference from Korshnoi's book My Best Games. One of the modern ways of playing against the Catalan opening. White relying on the strength of his fianchettoed bishop intends to make black's queen side the battle area, and so in the first instance black mobilizes his queen side. Knight c3, knight f6, d4, and b5. An interesting and aggressive move by Korshnoi. In his book he writes, pawn advances are justified if they help to solve urgent problems, strategic or tactical. Nevertheless, one attraction of chess is the fact that every rule has dozens of exceptions. Here white played queen d3, but let's also take a look at queen takes b5, then after c takes d4, black is getting a pretty nice position, no problem at all, but the line which drew my attention starts with knight takes b5. In this case, black can start using the vulnerability of the knight on b5 and after rook takes b5, knight e5, now that threat is knight takes d7 and then bishop takes a5, but here black can play knight b7, queen takes a7, c takes d4, knight d3, knight d6. According to Engine, this position is equal, but from afar all this looks very scary, because Blake has an extra piece, but according to the Engine, these post pawns on the queen side allow white to equalize the game. But in our game after b5, white chose a safer queen d3 continuation. Now comes c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight e5, and now white's prematurely developed queen is forced to return home. Queen d1. Here we have queen b6, bishop g5, bishop e7, rook c1, black castles kingside, knight f3, in here we have the exchange of knights on f3, Rook d8 and queen b3. Well, an inaccuracy by white, it was better to play bishop e3 and then knight e4. But in our game, we have queen b3, and the problem with this move is that after b4, white is forced to move back his knight on b1, an unpleasant choice, of course, when you are moving back your knight on its initial square. But after b4, instead of knight b1, which is the best continuation in that position, Werner Hook played knight e4, which allows Black to go for some complications and gain advantage. Here Korshnoi captured on e4. Actually, this was a simple blunder, and I'm honestly surprised that Werner Hook made that knight e4 move. Here all white could do was to capture on e7. Rook takes c1 and rook takes c1. Rook takes c1 is virtually forced, otherwise if bishop takes d8, then queen takes f2, check is coming with a mate to follow, or if bishop takes e4, then rook c8. Again, black is winning, that's why in our game we have rook takes c1, and there it goes, queen takes f2, check is on the board. King h1, rook c8, now white has to be careful, because there is a back rank weakness. 
if you capture on c8 and then try to win a piece, you can get checkmated. That's why after rook c8, Werner Hook moved back his queen on d1. Now comes rook takes c1, queen takes c1, and bishop c6, a powerful move with which Korshno is again emphasizing the vulnerability of the first rank. The bishop is untouchable because of the checkmate and actually already at this point white's position is totally lost. If you play a move like queen d1 preventing the upcoming combination and creating a mating threat then simply queen takes f3 check followed by knight f2. Let's go back, but in our game after bishop c6, we have bishop takes b4, not suspecting anything, white decided to win that free pawn, but it turns out that the pawn is poisoned. And now, please pause the video and try to find the winning move for black. Actually, in here, Korshnoi made a move and white resigned. Ready? That move is an absolutely staggering queen takes e2, look at this move, guys. And already it's difficult to find a good continuation, right now your bishop is hanging, if you move it back then knight takes g3 check is coming with a mate to follow, or if you accept the queen sacrifice and capture on e2, then after knight g3 double check, king g1, knight takes e2, the royal family is forked and in the end of the day, in the end game, black has an extra piece and two pawns, right? Yes, that's going to be an easy win, that's why after this devastating queen takes e2 move, Werner Hook resigned. A nice and destructive game by Viktor Korchnoi, which I hope that you enjoyed greatly. In the end, as usual, let's solve a chess puzzle, where the task is to find the winning line for white. It's white to move, and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, in the end, here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Good luck!